So when it comes to extracting data from a site, the two things that I really don't like to do at all, one is to render any JavaScript pages, and two is to pass loads and loads of HTML, uh, just because there is almost always a better way, unless of course the website that you're looking at is only pure HTML, in which case knock yourself out. But this case, I'm gonna show you this website here, which is a very modern shop. And I'm gonna show you that although some of the information is available through basic HTML scraping that you could do in the most normal way, some crucial information you might want isn't. So you can see that we have this grid item here with all of these products. And if we were to expand this, you could go ahead and pull some of this information out um, just through basic, you know, beautiful soup or something like that. You could get some information. There's a name, a price and stuff like that. If you go to the actual product page, which you'd be able to get from a link from here, you'll see that there's some more information. You could come here as well, but there's some, this available size is the actual kind of important part, I suppose, of you, if you're actually trying to like monitor this for website for whatever reason, you're not gonna be able to get that because this is all loaded dynamically from a script, which you would have to try to do something with anyway. So there is just a much better way. And I bang on about this a lot in my, all my videos. I'm gonna to go to inspect element. I'm going to hit the network tab. I'm gonna re remove all of the requests already and I'm gonna reload this page and we're gonna see what we get. There are a lot of things come up here. For some reason, Chrome shows me a load more than Firefox does, but there's a, one important one. If we go up to the top, there's this availability here. Now this gives us some good clues because we can see that there is a request URL, which has conveniently the API slash products and then this product code and then availability. Now, quite often I say that you can copy this and you can put it into Postman or something like that. But what you can actually also do is if you just copy it and paste it into your browser, you might get the information back anyway, because we've got all of the cookies and everything stored already in our browser. So it thinks we're just making the request as is. Now you can see this gives us a lot of information. It gives us the ID and the availability and all of that for all of the sizes and even back in stock dates. Now I looked at this the first time around, I thought, I don't know whether we should actually be seeing this information, but if you actually come to this product and you go to the size part here and you click on say six, it says one left in stock and here we go, one left in stock. So this, this is information is all available here. See 16th of May for the 5.5, 16th of May. So this information is all available. So what I've done is I've written some code here that I'm going to walk you through and explain why some of the decisions I made and how we can actually take that data and do something. Uh, so we can actually take that data and then uh, pull it all out of the store uh, into a nice format. Now what I also did in this is I used Pydantic models. And now there's a cool website called Pydantic to JSON or JSON to Pydantic. I'll link it for you, which you can paste in JSON information and then it will create your Pydantic models for you. Thank you very much to whoever commented that in my last video, really helpful. I should have known there was something like that. Anyway, what I found when I was doing this though, there was a lot of information that was missing from certain products and it was giving me lots of errors, which is why I have commented a lot of this out and a lot of, I, a lot of it I had to put optional beside. So this part of the video, unfortunately for you guys, didn't work out how I wanted it to, but I'm still going to use it nonetheless because I already finished with it. I'll talk a bit, a little bit about that later. But what we've got here is we have some functions. Now this follows along the kind of three kind of step strategy that I generally always, you always work to if I can. The first one is pulling the information out, which is what this one does. The second one is passing any information that we need. And the third one is outputting it. So the first one I've got here is basically making a request to the URL that we give it, which we're going to give it down below in our main function. And we're going to collect all the HTML from all the pages that we're going to need. Now there's a reason why we're going to need the HTML, even though I said this is not about passing HTML, it's because I couldn't find a really good way of getting this product in the uh, product code from anywhere else other than just scraping the main page with an HTML parser. It is necessary sometimes, don't hate me for the title of the video, but it's nice and neat in this data dash grid ID. So we can easily grab all of the product codes for all of the products on the page without too much hassle. So make sure that we got all of the pages. We scroll down to the bottom. There is a next page button, which I was able to just find here. 
and I referenced it here. So what we're doing is we're saying while true. I generally don't like this approach, but it seemed to be the best option in this case. Um, I'll definitely revise this if I find a better way. But what we're doing is we're getting the data from the URL that we're going to give it. I'm printing the URL, URL out so I can see it. And then we're appending to our all URL, all HTML list, the HTML response that we get back. So we're going to get it all first, and then we're going to loop through and pass it as we go. And then what we're doing is we're trying to find this element here. So this is the next page link CSS selector. So if I go in here and hit that, we can see there it is there. So we can see it's found that. This is a pretty neat way of checking your CSS selectors too, by the way. Now we're saying that if that does exist, we're going to get it. We're going to get the href attribute. And then we go back through the loop again and we get it again because we're setting the URL here to it. I did have to add in a base URL because it was only a partial. This was just the easiest way that I found. And I'm saying if we find, if we hit an attribute error, which will be the element is not found or none type does not exist, we're going to break out of our loop and return all of our HTML back out. So I'm going to collapse this function and this is getting all the information, all of the HTML from all of the pages or three in this case, so we can get all of the product codes out. I actually wrote a test one here because I didn't want to loop through all the pages every time. Uh, so I might use that as well. All this code is going to be in the GitHub link down below, by the way, too. So you can have a look at it and listen to go through it as I explain it or have a look through yourself. The next function I've got is to pass the product codes out of each one of those HTML. So at the moment, we've got a list of however many pages worth of HTML. So what we want to do is we want to go and we want to take that HTML and we want to find this grid item, which is what I showed you on the on the site here for each of the um, things that say uh, grid item. There we go. You can see them here. And we want to grab the attribute data grid ID, which is what we're doing here. And I'm just using list comprehension here, nice and easy to return a list of product codes. There's a reason why we want a list of product codes. I'll get that. We'll get to that now. Is that we can actually hit this url endpoint here with our product id to get all of that product information because we're using a session object with request html we actually hold on to enough cookie information so the site lets us do this some cases it won't let you do that on some sites and you might need to actually load up a browser to get additional headers or whatever uh, you just need to try it and see so what we're doing is we're just going to return out the json response then of the information that we get when we go to this endpoint. So if I copy this and we go, actually we can do it up here. I just remove the availability part. You'll see that we have all of this JSON that we're going to then take out. Now it's this one, this is what I put into the, um, let's find it, py JSON to pydantic here. So this is what I put in to generate my models. I won't do it with this one, I'll do it with this one now. You can see it's nice and easy. You just bung this in here and it does it for you on this side. So just as I go through editing this, I have a look and I can see that there's actually a button on the jason 2 website that says make every field optional, which would have solved all of my problems here. So if you do that and you have an issue like this, just go back and tick that box. I'll highlight it in the next frame. As I, as I explained, it didn't turn out that simple for me for the, um, this JSON in that case, let's find it again. All of this, there was too much information missing from some products. I had to write optional for a lot of fields, which was just not ideal. So now that we can actually get the product information like this here, we need to, uh, actually I decided to get the product availability one as well, which is what I showed you here. So we are pulling this out as well. I did exactly the same thing here, created a new model. I'll show you my models here. So these are the, the two that I was using really. Um, all of these are all of these additional ones I decided not to use in the end. But I did keep the product description and the pricing information. You can see that we have them here. So the next piece of code, the next function, was to get the availability for the product at the same time. So we did another request. So we're pulling the actual product information and then the product availability. This is very standard how an API would work, pulling the information out of the database. From there, I have two functions to load those separate bits of information into the 
uh, Pydantic models, which is basically going to structure all my data for me really nicely and easily and let, let me have good options for uh, accessing it and then moving on into other places should you need to. So that's our functions done. So what we wanted to do now is just construct it all together so we can make it work how we want it to. So all I've done here is I have my session and I have a general results uh, list. I'm going to store everything in and my base URL uh, that I start URL. Then we get our HTML list, which comes from this get HTML function. I'm using the test one in this case. And we pass in the session because we have to make sure for every request that we make, we are using the same HTML session because that's going to hold that cookie information for us so we can actually get access to those endpoints. I've used enumerate here. Now this is really useful because this gives you uh, the index as well. So you can actually uh, keep track of where you are if you're doing lots of different products as opposed to doing X plus X. I've made a video on that already actually. Uh, I'll put a link to that somewhere maybe. So for each HTML uh, data in the HTML list, so remember we had each the full HTML of each page, we're pulling out the codes. So if I was to just comment all of this out now, let's comment this out as well. We'll run it and we'll just print out the codes that we get. Let's run that. So you'll see that we get a nice list back. This is just for the first page of all of the product codes that have come in. So from there, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the actual information here. So we're going to load the JSON into our product model and our availability model by grabbing it from this two functions here. So we see we can grab it. It's returning a JSON object. And this is what we do to pass the JSON into our Pydantic model with this, these two stars here, the keyword stars. And that's going to create it all for us. So from there, what we can do is uncomment this. Let's just format this properly, please. Uh, one more. There we go. So what we can do here is all I did is I created a list. So our final result is going to have is going to be a list of list of dicks, and each of those lists is going to have the item information and the availability information as a list in there together. You could make this a tuple as well, um, or you could perhaps take the keys from here and add them to this dictionary. I did consider that, but I thought this would be okay because generally if we were gonna store this information in a database, we would copy what the actual website had done and would store the availability information separate to the product information, which is what you would want to do. I then put a nice little print statement in so I can see what's happening. A short sleep time because I found that if I was going too quickly, I wasn't getting the information. And then I'm dumping the whole lot into my results JSON file. So I'm going to run all this code now. And you'll see that I'm still printing out the code, which is nice. I'm gathering all the information. And this is my print statement here. So this will take a little, a few seconds to go through and get all of the information. As it goes through, it's loading it all into those Pydantic models, which I created with that website, which is really useful, by the way. I would highly recommend that you get used to using something like Pydantic or Pydantic, really, so you can actually really think about your data and what you're doing with it. Once this is done, it's going to store all of this information in my results.json file so we have access back to it. So that's done. Let's go to our project folder, open up our JSON results file. Um, I don't know what the best way to prettify this one is. There we go. So now if we come back to the top, you'll see that we have, here's the product information that we grabbed. So this is coming from our Pydantic model and we use the uh, to dict the item. This is our model and the dict to take it into a dictionary. So although we're only using the Pydantic uh, model very briefly. If you were to expand on this, you would then have might be much better off than just having the raw data, the raw JSON. So here's our ID, a load of product information. Here's the pricing information. So you have access to all of that. The title, the text, everything, subtitle. Uh, I don't know what USPS stands for, USPs maybe. I don't know. All this information and then underneath it, same ID, same ID. And we have the availability here like this. So we've pulled out an awful lot of information without having to construct any overly complicated uh, HTML scrapers. We haven't had to load up any pages with any 
uh, headless Chrome browsers or anything like that. All we needed to do was interrogate the website a bit more just to see if we can find those endpoints that's got that information in. And fortunately, we were, <clears throat> we were able to hold on to the cookies that we needed in our session to actually pull this information out. So don't always try to scrape data from HTML tags unless you need to do a little bit to get some product codes or unless the website is fully HTML. You get the idea. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I think you're going to like this one here, which is going to be a much simplified version of this, but typed out code wise so you can follow along if this was a bit too far along for you. But thank you for watching.